music is the language of angels. We're words. I don't know if, am I on? I don't think I'm on. Maybe I'm not on. I'm on here. On there? Am I on? No. <laughs> Well, I hope you're, that's a good place to start listening with your ear. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be a little concerned if you said you're hearing me with your eye. <laughs> Am I not on? Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three, three, two, one. Can you hear me? Talk louder. What about this uh, mic here? Okay. Are we good now? No. Good now. Good now. How about now? How about now? Testing. How about now? Nothing. How about now? Batteries? Does this work? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you think, yeah, it is turned on. You think that's simple? <laughs> okay, are we good? No? So I don't think any of the sound is, any of the sound on? I'm on Facebook, but yeah, but it's, what about, I know, but what about people here? They like to hear as well. What about, what about this? Can this, does this work? Testing, one, two, three. No? Okay. Testing, one, two, three. Testing. 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 I got to talk louder. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, folk of uh, Central Queens United, I'll have to put on what uh, we used to have. Uh, I think part of the training for uh, clergy was to be able to pronounce uh, and uh, be very loud, so I don't like doing that. Well, some might disagree, but anyway. I was saying that uh, at the beginning, music, er, music is the language of angels, I think. And I think why, why I say that is uh, music uh, really reaches out to all barriers, beyond all barriers, and where people cannot understand each other, they can feel and experience the music that words really do not do. And so as we listen this morning to our good friends from the musical friends as they shared their gift of music, both in music and song, uh, we are certainly grateful for, for the gifts that, that come to us. I'd like to share with you just a few of the announcements in the bulletin. Um, the first is, uh, is, of course, a warm welcome to each and every one of you, and uh, certainly to those who are hearing me, probably very loudly over our Facebook Live. Uh, a warm welcome to you as well, and I hope that as we gather as community, as friends, as strangers, that we will be strangely warmed by that wonderful presence of God in our midst. Um, and a happy 
Father's Day to all the dads, both here and beyond. I hope that you were given breakfast in bed this morning. <laughs> I maybe later. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. May this hold a, a good day for you. Just a few, again, few of the announcements. Uh, Camp Abbey, and this is uh, the, some of the work that's happening within this congregation that we need to hold up and celebrate. Uh, of course, there's a cost when we send uh, our youth to uh, children to camp. Uh, nothing happens without a price tag. And uh, so the UCW uh, is considering providing some financial assistance for children going to Camp Abbey this summer. If you are considering sending your child to Camp Abbey and would like some financial assistance, please reach out to uh, Velda or Kim, uh, who are representatives of the UCW. So that's a way in which we as a community take care of, of people. And so bravo Zulu um, for the, the wonderful work of being able to support our youth and certainly the wonderful experiences of camp. Um, the Bookworm uh, United uh, group will meet on Wednesday, June 22nd uh, to discuss the book Once Up on a River. So you're welcome to come out to that event. And that's always a good, uh, pl uh, friendly place to be and to discuss some of the uh, different readings that, uh, that's happening. Our official board is on Thursday, June 23rd at 7.45. So please note that, those who are uh, part of that board, the official board. But also, the meeting is open to anyone. So it's not exclusive to those members of that board but anybody that would like to come and participate and to be uh, at that meeting are more than welcome. And of course, to put a plug in for Gina again and the work that she's doing and her team regarding August 13th, the uh, yard sale that's going to take place at the church here, we're still uh, open to receive your wonderful gifts of, of stuff that you don't need anymore and bring in and uh, please do that as we prepare for the for that sale so I think though there are other announcements in the bulletin I trust that you'll have a look at those and uh, and identify those areas where you need to be uh, what you need to be about are there any other announcements or birthdays or special occasions that you'd like to share please come forward <laughs> yeah that's right you better speak loud put on that playground voice of yours update on reverend barb i went to see her on tuesday and uh, for those of you who are she doesn't to me she does not have dementia if forgetting one person's name means dementia then i've had it for years right debbie that's an inside joke between the two of us. Anyways, also, um, yesterday I went on a, a three-kilometer walk um, for, uh, to raise awareness for an autoimmune disease that I have called myasthenias gravis. Um, it's really difficult to explain, but anyway, look it up. <laughs> so, and I think that's it, except that um, I may not be able to make it on Sundays, uh, anymore because I think my work is going to be now 10 until 6 but I will be here for the yard sale and I hope that again just like Dr. Um, oh my god doctor um, <laughs> Reverend Greg said please bring things and also Reverend Barb would welcome visitors she asked about all of you and she misses you there you go that's all and you didn't even need to say Reverend Greg you just need to say Greg oh well then just Greg yeah there we go only you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ellen, is there some announcement that you'd like to make? Happy and happy anniversary to you, Ellen. <laughs> I think it's 36 years for us. Thirty-six years. There we go.
Are there any other special occasions or celebrations? Yes, Kim, please come forward. And I didn't forget, by the way. This is not on, so I just wanted to stop and mention um, about our little bit about our UCW group that's groups we have here at our church. In uh, just to give a little history of what's happened in this last um, this past year and beyond. In 1962, the UCW, or the United Church Women, was created. Today, the UCW is active in communities of faith um, from coast to coast, uniting and expressing their devotion to Jesus Christ in Christian witness, study, fellowship, and service. This year, the UCW, from across the country, will celebrate the 60th anniversary. Here at Central Queens, we have two UCW groups, Queens and Central. We met this past Tuesday evening to celebrate the 60th anniversary. Debbie Ling and Janet Stead had searched the PE archives, old records, and spoke with ladies whose families uh, members had been involved in the UCW in its beginnings. While many of the old record books are now in Sackville at the church archives, they were able to provide a very interesting history to our group. As the ladies said, when they read through the material provided, they recognized the hard work these ladies had done through the years. They provided leadership, Christian witness, and fellowship to their church, their community, and outreach into society. The UCW group did the fundraising for items that were needed in the church, hymn books, chairs, choir gowns, etc. Also for repairs and painting in the interior of the church and the manse. Money was raised back then with ice cream socials, traveling aprons, song service, supper caterings, and caterings to events, etc. Today we look back with pride on the work that the women have done in the church. We can be thankful for the work in response to their love of Christ to carry the gospel into the world. Their work is an essential part of church life. Debbie and Janet were also able to provide the inaugural roll call for the Hunter River UCW along with a long list of over 140 women who attended UCW over the years from the four congregations that now form our Central Queens. Many of our current UCW members are descendants of those women from the first meetings. And when I look around the church today, I see many descendants of the UCW members, both male and female. Today, we are fortunate to have Etta Ellis, uh, who was a charter member for Hunter Rivers uh, UCW. Um, and as well, Joan Bernard, who was a charter member for her UCW at Pleasant Valley. Uh, so we're, we're glad to have those ladies still serving today, 60 years later, and we thank you for your service along. I'll, I'll ask the ladies um, for the UCW, the two groups, if they could stand and, or wave and let us know who all you are. And uh, if we could do that now, that would be great. These are our ladies who are here today. If anyone's interested in joining one of our UCW groups, all are welcome. We'd love to have you join. And if you're interested, reach out to me or any of the ladies here today. We'd be glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim, for raising that the, the gift of the UCW and the, and the many ways that it has really has been the backbone of the church and uh, the mission and the work. So a wonderful legacy and a wonderful group. There was a person who traveled around a very small area, really, in a time that was f fairly challenging. The world was pretty difficult. And then this person 
talked about the good news was connecting with people's experiences, was accepting people in love and talked about Yahweh, this God. And then one day, and then one day his followers asked him, they said, who are you? And he simply said, I am the light. I am the light. May we worship and live and celebrate and find meaning as a people of faith, realizing the light that surrounds us. Let us take just a few moments to realize and experience that light in our worship and in our lives. worship. As a deer longs for flowing streams, where is our God? In the cleansing of the rain, in the refreshing of the pool, in the predictability of the faucet. Where is our God? In the melody of voices raised in concert, in the stillness of silence, in the cacophony of spontaneous praise? Where is our God? In the echoes of our prayers, in the reverence of bowed heads, in the hope of raised faces? The Holy One is with us. Let us open our hearts, let us open our minds, let us open our souls to God in this, our time of worship and praise. Our opening hymn, God is Here.
be seated. And I'd invite you to join with me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy wisdom, we hear you calling us together and to hope in your name. Ignite sacred courage in us to proclaim the good news of justice from the comfort of the sanctuary to the public witness of the city gates. Inspire a compelling vision of Jesus' beloved and empowered community that propels us to comfort, challenge, privilege, and participate in your creative work in our time. Renew our hope for humanity so that we might rejoice in this inhabited world and delight in your siblings. And with Jesus we share in this ancient prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And at this time, we'll have the reading of our psalm, or two psalms, actually, Psalm 42 and 43. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 42 and 43. Like a deer that longs for life-giving waters, so longs my soul for you, O God. Day and night I taste only tears, while they steadily belittle me, saying, Where is your God? Our voices rejoice, our voices joyful and filled with praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why restless, why cast down my soul? Still and you will see. My soil, soul is overwhelmed within me. Therefore I remember you in this land of Jordan, in Hermon and on Mount Mazar. With loving kindness you bless my days, and by night your song is with me. A prayer to you, giver of life. I I am like the one whose bones are broken to pieces through the taunting of my enemies. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against faithless ones. Save me from those who are deceitful and unjust. O send your light and your truth to lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. I'd invite you to stand if you're able and let us share together in our hymn, which is um, Each Blade of Grass.
Please be seated. Now, as you know, my, I'm, my voice, I go down and I'm all over the place. So if you're not hearing me or I'm doing the little, like the skydive thing, scoop down, just tell me to scoop back up. So I'll try to keep my voice at a constant level, which is hard for me. Okay. Well, how are we doing? <laughs> I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Well, you know what? I found this in amongst my belongings. And it goes way, 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 way back, almost well, around 61 years ago. So I'm holding a relic, and you're looking at a relic. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> now, you're supposed to say, no, no. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, that's right, that's right. You know what it is? Baby book. And I can remember looking at this baby book and thinking, whoa, it's pretty special. It had some nice different pictures in there. And I remember my mom put different things in and I would read them. I was born on the 29th day of March at Grenfell Hospital in St. Anthony, Newfoundland. I was born at 11.15 a.m. in the morning. So I was a morning child. I don't know if that means anything, but I'm sure it does. I weighed 8 pounds, 6 ounces. I was a plumper. I was 22 inches long, blue eyes, and this is a real kicker, dark brown hair. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And my name? Gregory Charles Davis. Gregory Charles Davis. And I look at that in my book, and I think, wow. It was kind of funny looking at your own name and saying, I'm Gregory... Charles Davis. I have a name. I have a name. I have a name. And you know, even way, way, way back when I look at that, I look at the, my name and say, that's me. I'm Gregory Charles. That's me. Now, I'm not knit. If someone said, hey, you, I would probably not notice. Or if someone said, hi, Fred, how are you? I probably wouldn't notice. They said, hi, Walter. I'd say, I'm not Walter, I got more hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> yeah, you have more out of faith. If they said, George, they said, hi, George. I said, that's not my name or Rod, or Sam, or you. My name is Greg. Greg. Someone, my parents, a long time ago, said, you're going to be Greg. And we're going to give you a name. And that name is special. And the other thing about Charles, my second name, my Charles is after my mom's brother. And that's special. So each of us were given names. Each of us have a name, and that's special. And as soon as we look in the mirror and I see, this is Greg, I think, oh, yeah, Greg is 
a special guy. And Greg has a lot of meaning. Greg is 5'11 and a half tall. He has a very shiny head. <laughs> Greg wears glasses. Greg um, he flew an airplane. He was in the Navy, is in the Navy. He's a minister. He's a father. He's a son those things and those when we name something it means that it's special did you ever have a teddy bear anybody have teddy bears or a special toy and do you just call your teddy bear teddy bear or do you call it do you have a special name and what's the special name pinky what a wonderful name yeah Pinky. And so you name that wonderful, what, what was it, a doll, a bear, or? Okay, excellent. So, so it has a name. And so I think that each of us are specially named by God. That each of us are special people in God's eyes. And like a loving parent, God's arms are so wide and so welcoming and so caring. And God names us, not by name, but God says, you are my child. You are precious. You I love deeply. So as we think about names and when we're babies let us also think about how we've been named by God as God's special child children that God's love is so real and so present will you pray with me hi God thank you for babies and parents and guardians and those who name us as special. Thank you, God, for naming us as your special children. Talk to you later, God. Amen. Joy, sing, peak, and repatter, shell, the joyous chorus that the dawn foretells. Make full the circle of God. Each cosmic hill, every creature's make, all form the beauty of this master ring. Make full the circle of God. As I say every week, darn it all, we do our best to be the best that we could be, and yet we make mistakes. We fall short of what we expect of ourselves and what God expects and, and what others expect. And that's the cost that we pay for being human. And yet... God is a God that realizes that we make mistakes and keeps calling us back, keeps journeying with us, keeps putting God's arm around our shoulder and saying, yeah, you did good, but you also did bad. And a way in which we find reconciliation with each other, with God, is being able to identify for ourselves the ways that we've We've not been the best that we can be. And this is not to go and somehow convince God, please make, please be good to us or love us. That love is already there. Prayer of confession is for us. 
to realize that we are creations of God and God calls us to be the best that we can be. And naming those shortcomings are ways in which we are able to be in right relationship with each other and with the love and the care of God recognized. So I invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession as it's printed on the screen and I believe in your bulletin. Holy, this is God. Fear seeks to our constant companion. It strives us with an overwhelming presence and prolific imagination. Fear surrounds us and blocks our vision and your path. Fear keeps us from picking up our cross as much as it is suppressing our joy in you. Fear invites us to believe the easy lie rather than confront the hard truths necessary for your kingdom to come. Too often we cast off your perfect love in favor of insidious fear. Forgive us for choosing fear when we could live in your presence and your way as a companion on our journey. Empower us to reject fear and all that fall complicit in dampening our truth. Amen. New life, new life, all new life awaits us as hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. That's what Romans says. Receive grace, embrace transformation, and enter the newness of life in which Christ fashions our struggles and our fears into characters of hope, into characters of joy. Know that each of us are a new creation in the love and the care of God. The gifts of God come generously and abundantly. We hold, nurture, and amplify them as they are entrusted into our care. We respond faithfully by sharing them for the good of community and creation. In this act of faith and trust, we transform our resources of time, of talent, of finances into the good news in the world. Your morning offering will now be presented. you to share with me in the prayer of the offertory prayer. We give you thanks, O God, our help, for the abundance of the gifts you have planted in us as seeds that we may share in bloom. May these offerings be received and magnified for your glory. Amen. Our scripture reading from the Hebrew scriptures is uh, a Genesis reading. Or Galatians, I'm sorry. Don't want to stress you out with the wrong. <laughs> Our New Testament lesson today is Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 to 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinary until Christ came, so that we might be reckoned as righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinary, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, 
there is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Here ends the reading. Let us continue to perk our ears to the Spirit's mumblings and the Spirit's presence. As I read scripture, which is from Luke chapter 8, 26 to 39. Then they arrived at the region of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And as he stepped out on the shore, a man from the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had not worn any clothes and he did not live in a house but he lived in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus he cried out and fell down before him shouting, what have you to do with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of this man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. And then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd stampeded down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds uh, saw what, what, what had happened, they ran off and told it to the city and to the country. And then people came out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And then they became frightened. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then the whole throng of people of the surrounding region of Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them. For they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. May these strong words that we find in Luke today, these strange words, these challenging words, may even in their challenge find a place where we might connect, where we might feel and understand the presence of the Holy, speaking to our hearts and our minds and our lives. So let it be. Amen.
Yeah, we feel that. Well done. We well, it doesn't sound right, something. No. Thanks, Martin. That's why you have friends in the music industry. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our hope and our salvation. Amen. Is the sound back? It's, no, it's not. Okay. Okay. The art of good storytelling is so powerful because it opens the door for the listener not only to 
hear what is being said, but to actually live the experience. And I think that's the appeal of storytelling, not just a story, but that we can connect with it, that we have little hooks on it, that we hook into our experiences and it becomes very personal for us. And I've probably said this to you before, but for us, usual, for us to really connect with the stories of Scripture, we cannot simply be the audience. We need to find ourselves situated, embedded somewhere in the story and to be able to live that and own that for ourselves. Living that story as if it were our own story. So as I reflected on the reading from Luke this week and my understanding of how we connect with Scripture that I've already described through story, the only thought that kept running through my mind for the service this morning was how in God's green earth are people going to place themselves in this story in any meaningful way? That's supposed to be funny, by the way. <laughs> I know, that's right. Yeah, I'm a serious guy. The writer described the scene, uh, one writer described the scene this way, and I thought it was marvelously written, and I'm going to share with you. She said, he haunts the places of the dead. Every night, the townspeople hear him shrieking among the tombs. When they are quick enough, they catch him, wrap his wrists and ankles in chains, and haul his naked body securely shackled back to town. But there's no containing this crazy man. He escapes each time. Trailing broken chains behind him, he wanders the wilds, tearing at his skin until it bleeds, trading one kind of pain for another. If he has a name, well, no one knows it. If he has a history, well, no one remembers it. If he has a soul worth saving inside his living corpse, no one sees it. No one looks. And then you throw in this ch the chatty demons, the suicidal swine, the insidious healing. What is this? Is it comedy? Is it horror? Good news? Our news? Bad news? Whatever it is, it's going to take a long stretch to connect with this type of story. Now there's a fair amount written about the strange parts of this story in an attempt to address what is going on in this man who's possessed by demons. And such pursuits has its merits. Such pursuits can also prevent us from seeing this story uh, to be our story, a story here and now. So how can we connect this story to our story? That's the challenge for the preacher this morning and maybe a challenge for the hearers as well. I think we begin where Jesus begins with this man, with the asking of a question. The question that, well, the, 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 how I, the, question I, the question I presented in our story time. What is your name? What is your name? I don't know if you took note or not, but the man approaches Jesus not to ask for help, but it seems to push Jesus away. I suspect that the encounter probably wasn't a peaceful one either. The writers of the gospel probably sugarcoated a little bit if it really happened. But Jesus asks his name. And by doing so, he begins to recall the broken man for himself. To his unique, to, he speaks to his humanity to his brokenness, to his beginnings, to his unique and precarious identity, even in all the demons that he says possess him, still presented as a child loved by God and not loved by his community, as we've seen. It isn't by accident that every baptism that we share in, part of the ritual is asking the parents or the guardians, what is the name of your child? What is the name of your child? Naming someone or something has very powerful consequences, don't, doesn't it? 
naming ourselves can be very liberating. What is your name? Has there ever been a more loving and searching question asked to us? A question that breaks down many barriers. What is your name? I wonder how we would answer such a question if we were asked, what is your name? Who are you really? Beneath the labels and the diagnosis, the pretense and the piety, the fear and the shame, the masks that we hide behind. Who are you when no one in the world is looking? What name do you yearn to be called in the lonely stretches of night? Who were you before you lost yourself, before something vital in you died? Do you even remember? Jesus begins where we must begin, with an honest questioning and naming of ourselves. Who are you? What is your name? The man promptly answers Jesus' question, what is your name? Who are you? The man answers, legion. Legion is who I am. Now the word signals his fragmented, chaotic state and alludes to actually the Roman Empire. A Roman legion was 6,000 soldiers. So a legion that he calls himself, he considers himself having 6,000 demons. Too many to count. The man is not so much possessed as he is occupied. And this fragmented, subdued state mirrors the situation of the land of the people under the Roman occupation. In other words, the sources of his brokenness are countless. Too many to name. Too deep. The assault on his mind and soul and body is multi-pronged. It comes from many sources. You see, it doesn't matter what language we use to describe the demons that possess this man. What we do know for sure is the man is stripped of agency, sanctity, dignity, and his community. It keeps him in isolation. It renders him anonymous, encourages him to manipulate his own body in hurtful maze. It deadens his mind and his soul and divides him. Does this sound somewhat familiar? It does sound familiar to me. We encounter in our own lives legions of demons. And I think this is, might be where we might be able to connect at some level with this story. Some of us are suffering from depression and anxiety. Some of us are addicted to alcohol, wealth, thinness. Some of us are slaves to the internet or prone to bitterness or caught up in cycles of, of dishonesty. Some of us can't shake traumatic memories that keep rushing back to us like, like, like powerful images. Some of us can't, some of us were abused as children. Some of us are seething with jealousy. Some of us are imprisoned within the systems, systems of injustice that stretch back many centuries. We can't imagine even the thought of being liberated. Some of us experience our gender or our sexuality as magnets for other people's hatred and hurt. Some of us suffer illness that crisscross the boundaries of medicine and culture, nature and nurture. Some of us know exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about when he says, what I want to do, I do not do, and what I hate, I do. Are you connecting with this story at some level yet? I hope you are. Although they're challenging images that I've presented to you. We all have our demons, and sometimes a legion of demons. And yet, even with those demons, God chooses to journey with us. God does not shackle us. God does not put us away. God chooses to put God's arm around us and to journey with us, to say, you are my child. 
You have a name. You are mine. It's interesting how the story ends, or I find it quite interesting and quite very much the way I think Jesus, this is the way Jesus is and how he understands his God. Jesus commissions the healed man to stay where he is with his own townsfolk, the same people who feared, who shunned, who trapped, who shackled him for many, many years. It says, stay with them. I think this is just like Jesus. To choose the very people we consider the most unholy, the most unredeemable, the most repulsive and unworthy, and commission them to share the gospel, to share the good news. And none of us are probably will not see ourselves as worthy to do that, to be those persons who stand for righteousness, who stand for the ways of, of justice and the ways of God in our world. And yet God says to each of us, you, my beloved, with all the demons you possess, you have within you, you have within your reach, within your creation, within your DNA, the way to speak to the world in ways of love and care. And I go with you. And I am with you. Here is a story about Jesus who finds us naked among the tombs, clothes us with dignity, shatters the demons to save us, and turns each of us into storytellers who will help heal the broken world around us, who commissions us to go forth and be a presence of God in all whom we meet. Yes, this is our God. This is the God of Jesus. And this, my friends, this is our story as well. May we live it, may we celebrate it in the eyes of a God who holds us, realizing that none of us are demon-free. We all have our challenges. We all have our cross to bear. We all do things and make mistakes. And yet, it is that God, that presence, that holds us, calls us by name, and invites us to go forward, to meet the world. May that be our story, and may our story continue to unfold as we follow the ways of sometimes what we think is a pretty crazy God and a pretty cool God. Let us pray. Creator God, we gather this day as, as a band of people who come at life in many, many different ways not unlike the closest friends that you encountered in your disciples. We come with our hopes and our fears. We come with our strengths and our weaknesses. We come as a people thrown together, making, trying to make sense of your love, trying to make sense of your call, trying to make sense of how you impact and move in our lives. And each of us, oh God, each of us, in our attempt to be your people, care for each other, and to continue to follow that love which we don't fully understand, and a presence that we fo can't fully comprehend, and yet, and yet is there. We ask your blessing upon each gathered here and all those out into the world in which you have created. We pray, O oh God, that you be with those who are ill or in pain, those who are feeling their hopes being dashed, those, O oh God, who live in fear and anxiety for the world and from each other, for those who hide away, for those who need a, a voice, a care. We ask, O oh God, that you be with each and every person in this beautiful creation that you've given us, and may we be your voice May we be your people, 
And may we know that wherever we go, we are loved, we are cared for, and we are commissioned to be your people, to be your voice in all that we do. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our concluding hymn is Healer of Every Ill. It's Voices United 619. May peace be with you as, you're, as you confront lies with truth and fear with hope. May the abiding one strengthen you to stand in truth and hope. May the living water refresh you with new streams of righteousness. May wisdom be the voice you follow now as you go out into the world in courage and emboldened and renewed. Go out in faith, go out in love, Go out to care and love each other. So let it be. Amen.
Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Keep us on our toes. <laughs> Keeps us on our toes. So is 7.30 a good time for practice? 7.30 a good time for practice? Never mind being late yet. Yeah, I think so.